I've got this annoying midge and I don't want it. I was hoping for big things. Or whether it doesn't pick up from the rear. Everyone's oh, like, oh no, the world's ended. Hey up woodlanders, welcome to this week's woodlog. I've had a bit of a crazy mad day today. Some of it on the computer, some of it sorting out some stuff at home, some of it in the greenhouse, sorting out my tomatoes. And yesterday was finishing off a little project at home. Underneath our carport was just this mess. And it's been doing me head in. But while I got a day, I thought, you know what? In order to get my life more organized, I'm going to have to just bite the bullet and get it done. So we did it, we put some simple DIY shelves up in the carport, which meant I could get some stuff out of the outhouse to make sure the outhouse was more of a washroom and not just a junkyard. And all in, just frees your mind to think ah, clarity. Just try and get things organized. That was yesterday. On the cards this week is all about getting ready for the Ashby Show, which is a week on Sunday. It's the same weekend as the Timber Festival. Last year we did the Timber Festival. This year things got a bit complicated with pitch fees. And so I've got this annoying midge trying to get in my eyes and I don't want it. Get off. In previous years they've never charged us. This year they wanted an exorbitant amount of money, which is insane. And I says, there's no chance of that. And while we were in negotiations and it looked, things went all very quiet on me, I got a call from the Ashby show people and they said, do you want to put a picture up? It's free if you demonstrate. And I'm like, you know what? Let's go for that. The Ashby show is somewhat different. So the Timber Festival is basically a music and arts festival with that sort of element of craft and nature and all that. So it's, it's good. I enjoyed it. And I've done that for about three years now. And then the Ashby show, we've never exhibited there, but that's very much a country show. Animals, livestock, horses, dogs, farming in general. Um, and they have lots of craft items and things on demonstrations. So that's where we're going, but I've got to get ready for that. I have an idea of what I want to demonstrate, which I think will be hazel riding, but I just need to decide what the finished panel is going to look like and I need some timber so I can do some prep work for items I'm going to make for the Ashby show. Right. Just like that and I can see that it's covered in holes. testing out today a new microphone so this is all recorded on something called a DJI Osmo action it's an action camera basically mirrors a GoPro the DJI action is better however the onboard mic is good but I wanted to try and refine the audio and try and eliminate some of the wind noise so I bought a microphone called a DT D4 Mini means nothing to me, it means nothing to you. It is good. The challenge I'm finding is I've got this whole ginormous sort of rig now. Before, I always felt I was fairly discreet, other than the tripod that gives the game away. The actual action camera itself is pretty inconspicuous. But now I've got this great fluffy thing going on and occasionally it just wants to tweak its little nose into the view. So you just see this little fluffy nose sticking out and that's not great. And also realize that because this is a, um, it's one of those microphones that only really picks up from the front. If I talk from behind the camera, you can't hear a thing. So this is a mic test with the microphone plugged in. And this is a mic test with the microphone disconnected this is the onboard microphone and then i'm just going to plug in back in the main microphone 
hopefully it won't upset the recording too much and you'll be able to hopefully see a difference what I will do as well is I'm going to keep recording and turn the microphone the opposite way and see how much that affects the voice quality when the mic is not pointing in the right direction I'm bringing it back into this direction again and how much difference that makes to the microphone sound Mm, I'm still refining the system. Anyway, let's go before it rains. Good afternoon. Managed to grab a couple of hours to try and rip down some of this timber that I got the other day for my coasters and key rings for the Ashby Show. Um, some of this timber is in a real bad way. So this is beach and the woodworm have had a field day in this. I don't know if you'll see that. This end it's okay, but the, this end, look, we've got peppered with holes all here. See you all then. That's woodworm. And then all this light tails type, that's all sawdust where the woodworm have eaten it all. So I think all this bottom section is scrap. However, this top section looks relatively clear, I think. And we've got some alder, some birch, but all oh, this has got holes in it. It's very frustrating. You put all the effort into doing on the sawmill. I don't treat the timber. I never have done. I don't really want to. You have to treat it with borax, which is an insecticide. When it's in storage like this, and it's that initial drying out period from like 40% moisture it fell in and to planking it. They just get in and maybe I ought to start using insecticide but somehow it feels a bit wrong. So I'm just trying to work out what it is I can get out of these. So that's a coaster, which is quite thin. There's ones with odd bits of holes in, so those will just get cut out. Then I've got some slightly thicker stuff there. I think I might be able to just about rip that down the middle. Same with that and that, so I can get two planks out of one plank. If I could do it on the bandsaw, that would be better, but my ability to rip saw on the bandsaw is hopeless. So I either have to do it on the circular saw, that usually does it. Hence, that's why I've been trying to get one flat side. So that's a very rough flat edge with a circular saw by hand. Then I'll put that across the top of the surface of planer a nice flat keen edge and then I might be able to surface that as well then so that when I put it on the circular saw I've got a nice flat edge to put up against the fence
I managed to squeeze in another couple of hours of workshop time in the other day. We got done some tea light holders, little uh, cherry squarish rectangle tea light holders. They're quite nice. Karen's going to do some pyrography on those. Not all of them because uh, the cherry just looks so awesome. This is all coaster material. I managed to get that through the plane the other day with some ridiculous amounts of waste. First job though is to rip down these coasters in the width and then I can cross cut them. Got some timber here for some key rings as well. I want to try and get some key rings done because we've not got many left. This is all prep for the Ashby show which is this weekend. So I'm really looking forward to that. I've not been to the Ashby show for about six or seven years. We will see how the sales go. I don't with shows, I don't tend to anticipate big sale days. I did used to. I used to think, oh great, we're going to get rich quick here. And it never works out like that. The Ashby Show is a free pitch, so I've got no costs other than setup time. I see it more as a day out with benefits rather than um, necessarily a big earnings day. This is some rowan I had oh, about six years ago from a job in Church Gresley, which is near Swaddling Coat. And rowan is a stunning timber, as you can probably tell. Some of this has started to spalt, so that's that white creamy stuff. One of the biggest challenges with rowan is you get some sort of wood grub, which is not wood worm, it's more like a wood wasp. It's this white grub that um, plays havoc and wriggles and jiggles inside the wood and creates these rather intricate little galleyways and it gives me the creeps. Something called trithobia, which is a fear of holes. Cluster them together, that proper gives me the creeps. Anyway, we digress. But have a think in the comments, would you buy a piece of wood with these valleys in, or would you say, ew, didn't like that? I'd be interested actually to see what you think, because sometimes as as makers, I'm not really a maker, but you know what I mean. Sometimes as we look at something and think, oh no, I won't buy that, and we don't bother making it, and then other people are like, oh that's amazing, I love that. So I'd be interested to see where you stood on this one. I've had just one mad busy week. I've been busy getting ready for the Ashby show. So I've been working on a project for home that's incorporated into the Ashby show and that I've got another video for. But I've been in the workshop prepping, I've been on the woods prepping. It's now Saturday afternoon. The show starts tomorrow morning at 8.30. My next job is just to get the trailer all loaded up and ready. That's Rowan. That is stunning, isn't it?
Today has been what I call a decompression day. Let me explain. Yesterday was the Ashby show and today I need a decompression day to analyze and process all what went on at the Ashby show. I was hoping for big things. It just never quite happened yesterday. Catastrophe, disaster, learning curve maybe. I honestly don't know what to call it. Give me a minute. In the back of my mind, I had high hopes for the Ashby show. I was really excited by it. I thought we could do perhaps a 150 pound day, but with the amount of people there, and the beautiful weather as well. I just thought, well, we could be in for a 300 pound day. But it wasn't to be. There was a number of factors involved. There was an entrance fee for the consumer, 1750, 20 pounds on the gate. I thought that was, for me, that sounds quite a bit, but because the show ran from 8.30 in the morning till 6 p.m. That's not a bad day out, really. But that, that can offset some people's purchasing abilities, I get that. And of course, it's July. So not many people are in gift buying mode. And of course, we're also on this edge of recession thing in the UK. Everything just keeps going up, rising costs. Everyone's keenly aware of that. So I think that affects people's like, do I want it? Do I need it? Can I eat it? Will it help me to live? Can I survive without it? There was all that going on. There was an awful lot of footfall. It was a very, very busy day. There was a lot of people out and about. A lot of people took interest in the hazel hurdles and the panel I was making. And you always get interest in the finished items we have under cover. But we wondered, is it the dome arch that people don't like to duck underneath? We've noticed that bigger gazebos, big square ones where you've got a high ceiling, tend to be more open and tend to attract more. People prefer it when the table is at the front, but then you get the rain on all your stuff and it just makes marks on all your wood, so that's not very good either. They certainly don't like it when you hover around, so I tend to steer, keep well out of the way of the internals of the tent, because people just like to be able to browse without harassment. And I've always felt, if somebody actually wants something, they can look me in the eye, pop and see me, and buy something. I do get that I'm not very visible sometimes. Maybe I ought to have A up Woodlanders, something on the t-shirt, able to maybe across the back, or, I've got a little name tag, but I forgot to wear that yesterday. So sometimes people don't always know who to look for to be able to buy something. So we sold a coaster, and then we never sold a thing until lunchtime when we sold a box of charcoal and a bag of charcoal. One chap wanted to buy a bag of charcoal, and we tried to do it via the app then, which I've got this uh, called Zettel, which is a um, contactless payment system works on the mobile phone, relies on a mobile phone signal, and that's when we started to realise there was a problem. It turned out that the mobile signal wasn't very good on site, and the minute I tried to connect my little widget gadget to the internet, it just died. I tried everything, rebooting, and it was then that somebody said, oh, the internet isn't very good up here, I think we're having problems with all the sales. So I did a few more inquiries and it sounds like quite a number of vendors were having a job trying to connect to the internet. And when the mobile signal is weak and you've got about 50, 60, maybe even more, 100 traders, food traders, ice cream man, everybody, there was a whole craft tent, all got contactless payment, all struggling to get onto the internet. And so after two attempts, well, after three attempts with this guy and two more people trying to pay with card, we had to abandon ship and it was like cash only. Well, that's awesome, I love cash. Cash to me is, has to be kept, but that's another rant for another day. The minute electronics go down, 
everyone's like, oh no, the world's ended. We can't pay. So they didn't. And they didn't buy, and they didn't even ask to buy anything because most of them had got contactless payment cards and contactless phones to pay, and it wasn't working. So they, they just knew that all they could do was browse that day. And I think anybody that got any cash was saving it for the food and for the ice cream and for the fudge cake and the... So our takings yesterday for a 12-hour day was £28. So it took me four days of advanced prep of that one day at the show plus today's breakdown day which is an empty trailers put all your stock back put it in the cupboards cry your eyes out on the bed moan and just generally fidget and be mardy all day <laughs> that's what today is <laughs> i've lost six days for 28 quid so I'll be honest, it's not that I was desperate to have those sales to be able to feed the family. I honestly cannot rely on event sales to keep me alive. But what I do find particularly annoying is that I seem to now, I feel I've lost six days of my life basically to demonstrate. Now, if, if I have to go to shows solely to demonstrate and not to rely on any sales, then some things have got to change. Am I prepared to sacrifice a day, every now and again at a show, to demonstrate the craft of splitting hazel? Which I am passionate about, um, but it's whether I can, I, I've got to accept mentally that that is what I'm there for. And I, then I wouldn't even pack any wood stuff up. I, I wouldn't spend days prepping I wouldn't take my gazebo, I wouldn't take my tables, I would just turn up with an empty panel and all my hazel, arrive on the day, leave with a, a full panel and um, and that would be it. I, I just don't know, at the moment I just feel like flattened, flattened. I mean, if, I was, if we were to put a percentage on it today, yesterday's percentage dropped down to about 30, 40%. I was like, by about two o'clock in the afternoon, I had lost it, I'm like, it's the end I'm not doing any more and I had to stop on Marty and Ellie Ray was fed up because she was bored Karen was fed up because she was trying to look after Bella and that was full on because there's of course, dogs everywhere uh, we'd all had enough by about two half past two so I've got a lot of evaluating to do and I think I know where I'm going with it I'm sure it will change again I just wanted a moan honestly I've moaned to Karen I had a moan to my sister and my brother-in-law. They all got it yesterday. And the father-in-law got it last night. And I think I've got it out of my system. But I have made some notes for future events. And we'll just see how it goes. But I'm, if you're a crafter, if you do any kind of event sales, and for these people that rely on event sales, fair play to you guys. I mean, I don't know how you manage it. Week in, week out, sales, sales, sales at events. And if you don't make it, you're really struggling. I'm getting out of my system. <laughs> so uh, Next job is to empty out a little bit of the trailer. I've got a few more bits to empty out. I've got my panel finished. This is for a separate video project to give you a quick sneak peek. There you go. I would say that concludes our little wood log for this week. It's been a proper, random, weird one. But if you're able to, enjoy what's left of July, enjoy some summer shows, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.